Stalls can be very frightening at first, but in this video I'm taking you along on my stall exercise and will visually demonstrate what a stall looks like to help you understand it better. We are about to stall and this is our adventures in and around South Africa. This is part 9 of my flight training series and in this video we are focusing on stalls. Stall spin accidents make up about 14% of all fatal accidents and is therefore extremely important part of your training. Shamir, my instructor, will take me through all the different stall configurations, how to recognize it and how to recover from it. I will also show you what it looks like during a stall to get a better understanding of what happens. Just a disclaimer, although this video is meant to be informative, it should not be used as instruction. Please consult your instructor. Check the finals are clear, nobody on the radio. Turn around my traffic, Papa Bravo Charlie entering, lining up 2-0. That's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what makes instruction enjoyable. Yeah? From the very first day, it's me doing things, and yeah. now I'm like, just, okay, show me what you do, let's yeah. do it. Panorama traffic, Papa Bravo Charlie, rolling to zero. After departure, climbing 6,300, depart, uh, routing to Heineken. Nice. Okay, temperatures are all green, HP is alive. Okay, rotate. Us down. Helicopter general flying area, Papa Bravo Charlie, airborne. Panorama over it ran water. Climbing 6,300, routing to Heineken. Very nice. I love the confidence you got on the radio today. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yesterday you could pick up your little bit like, ooh, what do I say, where am I? Yeah. yeah but today it's like, it's settled in, so it's just nice, good. Yeah. Before performing the stalls, I was introduced to the hazel checks. Checking height, airframe, security, the engine instruments, looking out for traffic, landing location, and turning on the lights for visibility. Okay, so, are you ready? Because... We are about to stall. Nice. Okay, so let's start the maneuver in the beginning. I'm going to be following through with you as well. Okay. Let's slow, pull the power all the way back. And so now we're going to pull the plane back and we're going to maintain altitude. So typically yeah. you'll find people aggressively entering a stall by lifting the nose. Yeah. Our intention is just to maintain altitude. So this is, uh, we'll explain when we got on the ground again where this typically happens. We're using rudders to keep the balance of the aircraft because the ailerons is outside of the slipstream. Okay. So you can hear a warning already. You can now feel the nose dropping. Allow okay. it to Stay drop. Uh, Jabiru, Pass the horizon. Power. Change to back to the uh, Two nautical miles. Uh, and then we will take out. So now we will, in this one, we have lost altitude, just about 300 feet. Yeah, let's do a climbing uh, turn that way. We'll go back up to the 7,000 feet. Once you're in the stall, because of the weight of the nose, you will feel the nose drop itself. So the nose will literally want to drop itself. At that point, we're just gonna release the pressure and allow the nose to drop. Once the nose passes that horizon, we're going to increase the power, we'll go full power. We're gonna make sure that the speed starts coming up again. And then we're gonna ease back out of that dive so that we can gently level the plane. Now I'm mentioning again, gently leveling the plane because we don't want to pull it up quickly because then relative airflow changes position so then we're going to get relative airflow from the bottom which is again if the relative airflow is from here that's your angle of attack yeah. you're still getting separation so you can go into another store okay so what would be your um, most reliable indication for a stall then i think that the most common symptom of a stall will be a very high nose attitude okay and a reduction in speed that means you're approaching a stall okay so your question, valid question, but there's two ways you can look at it. Um, for, the, for training, we're looking at 
the actual store, so we actually make the aircraft store. In reality, you must pick up a store before it happens. Okay, so you must be able to pick up on symptoms so that you can recover it before it happens. But should it happen, you must also still be able to recover. So the general rule to a stall is recover on first symptom. Yeah. The quietness in a cockpit, if we intentionally pull the power off, is not really considered a symptom. Yeah. The nose high attitude can also, you, you can, you, you're going to get two minds of thought there. One's going to say, yeah, but that's a stall because your nose is high. The thing is, we don't physically pull the nose up to get the angle of attack. We were just trying to maintain an altitude. So it yeah. is probably something that you don't even recognize approaching yeah. in the event that it was really happening. So in this plane, our first symptom of the store will be the warning, the yeah. store warning. Okay. So when you do hear the warning, we're not going to recover it on that because we want you to feel the plane recovering it. Yeah. So as you come there, when you hear the initial one that's just before the store, you'll feel the nose getting heavier. If you feel the nose getting heavier, allow it to go down. Okay. And then once it passes, pointing down, it's past, breaks the horizon, you put full power and ease the thing back into certain level. And if you then want to climb, you can then add more power. You yeah. keep your power well before. So you get first back to the level. Remember the certain levels are foundation. So you first get it back to this, happy with everything. And then if you want to climb, you climb. We should recover with less than 150 feet. We're going to now do a store with landing configuration. In other words, IE. I don't know what IE stands for. Great IE. example. Eh? I, an example. Yeah, it's an example. Why do you say IE, not EG? Anyway, whatever. <laughs> we'll Google it later. <laughs> Ask the English people. Yeah. The, the um, smart people. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the store with a, in a landing configuration. Okay. So we need to slow ourselves down for white arc. We're going to keep it on climb. We're going to keep all the things on. We're still in the right position. This is still, this is essentially only on clip here where the remote control is. Ah, I see so we're in, still in the same area. We don't hear anyone in our area. We're in the 15 minutes of where we were. Yeah. So Hazel is still current. When you're doing this as a check flight or a test flight, yeah. then rather go, should I do Hazel again? And rather have that guy say, okay, Hazel's still current. Okay. Legs point a little bit more south. Yeah. And then when you are ready, you can start taking flaps for us. And, and then uh, if you want to trim for it, you can. Um, I normally typically don't do the trim for it because when they do the recovery, then they can go yeah, to an aggressor. Yeah. Okay, happy with this. I'm happy with that. I can take a little bit more power off. And then there's your 85, so now you can start taking flap. Okay. And the only reason we're doing it in the landing configuration, the stall happens exactly the same. The yeah. angle of attack, is gonna, the, the stall speed is a little bit lower, Yeah. but the attitude of the Full aircraft, uh, you can go for uh, The attitude of the aircraft will change dramatically. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And now you can go for the power off. Yeah. Yeah. So hold it there, try and keep the altitude. Remember rudders full direction. Yeah. And you can see it's already approaching and then the nose is dropping. Allow it to go. Full power. Gently back to level. And then you'll start cleaning your flaps. So now you can go to two. Hold it, check it, make sure yeah. it's good. Go to one. Hold, check, adjust, and then flaps up. To demonstrate what's happening to the airflow in the stall, here's some footage from when we did six months of research around vortex generators for our kit fox on the About to Stall Adventure channel. The full video is linked in the cards and in the description. What you can see here is that as the angle of attack increases, the airflow starts detaching at the rear root of the wing. This is because of the shift in center of pressure causing the high pressure air under the wing to undercut the airflow over the wing and separate from the airfoil. As angle of attack continues to increase, more air detaches until the lift is not sufficient to maintain flight and a stall occurs. Okay, happy with that? Yeah. So the only thing with a stall in the full flap is that the nose doesn't go as high and it does stall at a lower number. Yeah. That's the only thing. Everything else remains the same. The warnings is there, the things there. The one thing we can see on the sling is that the buffet is not there. Yeah. And it's again because and it's, of position of It the makes it almost a little bit more difficult to recognize. It, it would make it a little bit yeah. better, yeah. And then your typical positions of the store will commonly be on that base turn, probably on the final approach turn. Yeah. 
Helicopter General Flying Area Papa Bravo Charlie overhead Heineken at 6300 routing back to Panorama. Nice. And then have a good look out here in the General Flying Area because you won't be back for two or three weeks. <laughs> now only in your case probably two. The reason Shamir said this is because we are moving on to circuits. So stay tuned and please consider subscribing so you'll be the first to know when the next episode circuits is up. If you find this video helpful please let me know in the comments below and smash the like button. Until then, dream big, fly high and live the adventure.